I guess I want to welcome everyone to this month's edition of our Big Data Meetup. My name is Siddharth Agrawal. I'm the organizer of Big Data Bellevue, and my co-organizer is Chaitanya, <clears throat> who is also attending. Um, we've been doing this meetup for several years now, and um, always amazing to see the progress that's being made um, in the big data space. Um, what we're about is, you know, how to use big data to solve real world business problems. And, um, you know, we have a variety of members who come from a different backgrounds. Um, and so in general, you know, we encourage folks to ask questions. Part of the objective here is to learn something. Um, but we do have a dedicated question time at the end. Um, so this month we're going to be talking about Apache Kylin, which is a technology that lets you do super fast queries on big data. We actually had a talk on Kylin just over a year ago and um, the technology itself has progressed um, a lot in the meantime. So we'll see how it got updated. Um, you know, just to get things started, since we have a, a reasonable size attendance, um, I wanted to give folks a chance to, you know, kind of just give their name and why they're here, what their interest is. That's it. Um, give them a chance to, you know, just to say something. And then, you know, we'll start the talk. So if that's okay with folks, I'm going to just go down the list of attendees. And when I call your name, you can unmute yourself. Um, just say your name and, you know, what your interest is in this group. Um, and then, you know, then we'll proceed with the talk. Um, so if that's okay, I'd like to call on the attendee at the top of the list, which is AAA. Just get your name and your interest. You should be able to unmute yourself. Um, okay, so it looks like we <laughs> did not get a response there. So let's try Aaron West. Hello, I'm sorry, what's the question? Um, your name and why you're here. Well, um, I understand Kylan to be an um, OLAP-like um, or OLAP open source product and I'm interested in learning a little bit more about it. Great. Thank you. Um, we'll move down to cloud bod. Yeah. Hi, this is, uh, my name is Jish Nath and I am generally interested in the, in the data space and I might have uh, a talk next month. Great. Thanks. Uh, next one is Daniel. Hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Daniel Muldrew, and yeah, I guess uh, Parquet kind of piqued my interest. Uh, we're actually looking at that as a potential format for the, the terabytes of data we generate. Great, thanks. Uh, next is Jay. Hi, uh, Joel. Um, love my data is already out there on the cloud. Um, just trying to take advantage of it. Um, try to get access to the data faster. Great. Um, Kai? Um, there's a Kai Chi. Um, I'm right, not getting a response. Let's go down to KK. Hey, yes, I'm here. Yeah, so just your name and why you're here. So my name is Kamal, and uh, we have many of the big data use cases. Uh, we were anyways using a lot of those technologies, but not this. I just want to see if this particular uh, framework fits uh, any of our requirements. Great, thanks. Sure. Um, Jen, 
if you could just give your name and your interest. Hi, uh, I'm Jennifer from uh, Collegians. I'm just uh, here to support uh, my teammates. Great, thanks. Um, Nikhil Jain? Yeah, hi, this is Nikhil. From, I'm from Kylegens. I'm here to attend the event to understand more on Apache Kylie and 5K. Great, thanks. Um, Xiaofeng. Hi, <laughs> this is Xiaofeng. Uh, I'm uh, one of the uh, committer and a PMC member of Apache Kylie. I have worked on this project for a couple of years. Um, uh, in this year, one of our target is to release Apache Killing 4.0 with the new uh, packet feature. And uh, Kaigo and Rupen, the presenters, uh, they are my teammates. So today I will uh, would like to join this and to support this uh, webinar. Welcome to join. Thank you, Shafan. And yeah, you presented a year ago. That was great. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Last a year. Thank you. Um, next is Xiao Shang. If you'd like to just give your name and your interest. Um, the last one has a Chinese letters. Okay, um, I think we got everybody to who wanted to introduce themselves to give us the introduction. And so with that, um, I would like to turn it over to the, our, this month's speakers. Thank you, uh, Sadas. Uh, this is Kai. I think uh, we are ready to go. Okay, um, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to join today's meetup. Uh, this is Kai. I am a senior solution architect in Collegians, and uh, I'm also the Apache committer uh, in Apache Calling, this open source project. And I'm uh, very happy to have Rupen Wang joined with me together today. Rupen is an active contributor in Apache Calling community. He's the major developer of this new storage engine. We are going to discuss this new storage engine in Apache Calling, which is based on Apache Parquet. Here is uh, today's agenda. Um, I guess most of you have heard of Apache Calling before, but maybe some of you are not so familiar with Apache Calling. So I will give a quick introduction about Apache Calling firstly, and then uh, we will introduce the original intention and the region, reasons for designing this new engine. After that, Rupen will introduce the design and implement, implementation of the new engine. Then we will demonstrate the difference in query performance between the old and the new engines. And uh, some benchmark results we collected in the lab. Finally, I will introduce the use cases of the, this new engine. All right, let's get started. So first of all, uh, what is Apache Calling? Apache Calling is an extremely fast OAP engine for big data. It was designed to provide OAP capability in the big data era. By re renovating the multi-dimensional queue and the pre-calculation technology on Hadoop um, and Spark, Calling is able to achieve near constant query speed regardless of their uh, growing data volume. Reducing query latency from minutes to subsecond, Calling brings online analytics back to big data. It was first developed by eBay and later contributed to the Apache Foundation. After a period of incubation, it successfully graduated into Apache top-level open source project. Later, the founding team created a company based on Apache Calling, Colleges, to provide customers with commercial versions and services of Apache Calling. It is worth mentioning that the new engine we are going to introduce today 
was developed by collagens and contributed back to the community. Before this, many commercial users had, have used this feature in production scenarios already. All right, so let me introduce some key features of Apache Kotlin. The first one is the ultra-high performance. With OLAP and the pre-calculation theory, Apache Kotlin can guarantee sub-second query response on trailing level data volume. Here are the real data from community users. Queries on trailing rows. 99 of the query response time is less than 1.3 seconds. Since the data is pre-aggregated in advance and stored in cubes, when queries are issued, there's no need to scan source data for online calculation again, which greatly speeds up their query performance. And there's no downgrade as data grows. With that, Apache Kotlin can provide extremely high query concurrency. At the same time, Apache Kotlin provides a standard ANSI SQL interface. For data analysts, they do not need to learn new technologies or new languages. They can just use their most familiar tools to perform data analysis on large data volume. In addition, Apache Kotlin also provides GDBC, ODBC, and RESTful APIs. Analysis applications or BI tools can easily integrate it with Apache Kotlin. Apache Kotlin uses Hadoop technology to achieve horizontally expanded computing and storage capabilities, able to meet the storage and processing needs of massive data. Well, uh, today we are going to introduce the first step towards a Hadoop-free architecture as an OLAP engine. Apache Kotlin provides an easy to use modeling method that supports multi-dimensional data modeling. It also provides rich optimization and pruning functions so that a single queue can accommodate more dimensions and more data. Users, they don't need to write code and only need to perform multi-dimensional modeling as Euro to analyze the data. They just drag and drop, define the job uh, the table conditions, which greatly reduce the maintenance cost of the queue. Okay, next, let's take a look at the architecture of Apache Kotlin. On the left side, those are the data sources supported by Apache Kotlin. Not only uh, Hive and Kafka are supported, Apache Kotlin can also support RDBMS data sources such as MySQL, SQL Server, and so on through JDBC. Data will be ingested from data source to Apache Kotlin. Users can define models in Apache Kotlin Web UI with just a few simple clicks. Apache Kotlin will automatically generate some MapReduce or Spark tasks based on their models and queues users define. There, these tasks will load the data and build queues. Their uh, constructed cube will be stored in HBase. If you notice that HBase is the story engine in this architecture, which will be replaced by Apache Parquet, and that's our major topic today. As we mentioned earlier, Apache Kotlin provides ANSI SQL interface and can also provide query services to applications through GDBC, ODBC, and RESTful API. All right, so uh, let's take a brief look at the users of Apache Kotlin. So far, more than 1,000 companies worldwide have adopted Apache Kotlin. They are located in various industries, including the internet, finance, manufacturing, retail, and more. Many of them are leading companies in their industries. Apache Kotlin helps them mine the value in massive data, shorten the time from data to insights, and enhance the competitiveness of enterprises. At the same time, they also actively participate in the community to help improve Apache Kotlin and make the community better. If your company is also using Apache Kotlin, you are very welcome to share your use cases and experience in the community to help others to better use Apache Kotlin. Okay, so since Apache Kotlin has been adopted by many companies, we got a lot of feedback from them. 
One feedback often mentioned by users is the storage engine. We talked about it earlier that Apache Kaling uses HBase as their storage engine. Previously, some friends in the community tried to use Druid as the new storage engine to replace HBase. Why this call for replacement of storage engine so high? Let's analyze why we want to develop a new engine and in what ways should this new engine be improved? We all know that Apache Kaling is well known for its super high query performance, but honestly, not all queries can get subsequent responses. For example, in some very flexible query scenarios, the future fields may be randomly combined. Why does Apache Kaling queries perform, query performance decrease for this kind of query scenarios? In fact, the reason is the storage engine. Let's take, take a look at the, some limitations of HBase as storage. First, HBase is not a true columnar storage engine. However, in the analysis scenario of OLAP, often we only select part of columns in the data for uh, slicing or dicing to observe the metrics. So there's no need to get the entire row of data. That's a typical application scenario for columnar storage. At the same time, the cube storage format designed by Apache Kaling is more suitable for columnar storage. Later, we will use examples to illustrate the storage format. In addition, HBase only has a single index column column, which is row key. In other words, only row key is sorted. Unlike the well-known RDBMS, HBase does not support building indexes on any columns. In this way, it results in some columns that are not index indexed. And the filtering on those uh, columns, the performance will be very poor. And uh, let's take a look at this example. There are three attributes in this table, date, city, and product. And we also have one matrix here. In Kaling, we will load the table into cube through pre-processing. And cube will be stored in HBase according to a certain format. In fact, we will encode these three attributes, stitch them together in a certain order, and store them on row key, just like this. So uh, why do we do this? As mentioned earlier, only row key in HBase is sorted. In this way, you can use the sorted row key to apply query conditions to filter data. For example, uh, we have some queries here. The first one use date as the fil con filter condition. Since date is ranked first in row key. If you can see the row keys here, that is in the first place in the row key. It has the best filtering effect. We can directly find the record for the day, 2020, January 2nd. And we can find this record and fetch the result from each table directly. Uh, if we are using stars to represent uh, the scores, for query performance, this query will have five stars. That means the filter effect is perfect. Next, let's take a look at the second query. As you can see in this query, we just use city as the field condition. Since the order of city in row key is after date, if you can see the row key here, the city is arranged after the date column. For filtering, we cannot directly search it in row key by the value of city. And we need to scan among all dates. And then in the subset of data, which has the same date, for example, the, the first uh, record and the second record, they have the same date. And then we will filter by city in these two records and gather uh, New York City. So we, we can see the filter effect uh, decreased. And uh, if we use, uh, again, if we use stars 
for the scores of query performance. This query will only have three stars. The third, the third place in the row key is their product. Obviously, its filtering performance has become worse. It is necessary to scan all the data to find the final re result. So only one star rating for this query. That means uh, the order of the attributes in HBase will affect the query performance. Not only weak filter ability, HBase throughput can also limit the concurrency of queries. In addition to query performance uh, in complex query scenarios, the old version of Story Engine also has some problems regarding maintenance. In the old version of Engine based on HBase, we found that it often takes a lot of effort to maintain HBase cluster. For example, in order to obtain stable query performance, we must keep monitoring the workload of HBase cluster because the high workload of HBase cluster often leads to a decrease in query performance. At the same time, HBase relies heavily on the CPU, memory, network resources of the cluster. If it is, if it is not well managed or configured, it often encounters situations like uh, out of memory. Uh, in addition, if you need to upgrade the HBase version for calling, you need to stop the service to complete the upgrade. The reason is that calling relies on HBase call processor, and updating call processor requires HBase table being disabled. Other than that, as the amount of data grows, we often need to expand the cluster. And the, the expansion of HBase cluster often requires a lot of effort. Another important consideration is whether the new engine is cloud friendly. In the design and implementation of the old version of engine, computing and storage are very tightly coupled. We all know that in the design of solutions on the cloud, it is often necessary to separate computing from storage to obtain better elasticity. At the same time, a major feature of the cloud is infrastructure as a service. Consumers use resources on demand and pay according to usage. A good cloud native product should be able to support on-demand creation and release resources when it is not needed or when the load is, is low and to achieve cost effective. In addition, in order to show, show the differences uh, between different cloud platforms, the new engine should be able to be easily containerized, leaving the possibility for future integration with uh, other container technology. All right, so uh, for the following sections, I will hand it over to Rupen. Uh, the floor is all yours, Rupen. Oh, okay, thanks, Kaigo. And uh, thank you all for attending the webinar. Uh, my name is Wang Rupeng. Uh, I'm a contributor of Kali, and in the past six months, I'll be working on open sourcing in a party. So next, uh, I will elaborate what is and hold it in detail. I will introduce the design and uh, the Im implementation of Kenyan Parky first. Then there will be a live demo and uh, benchmarking job. Uh, to know more about Kenyan, it's important to know its architecture. Uh, can leverage its pre-calculation to improve query performance and concurrency. Uh, with the REST server, uh, it can easily integrate with BI tools while OTPC driver CDP driver and REST API. Hive is used as an input source. Uh, may produce aggregate metrics during kube building. Uh, the aggregate data will be saved into its base. The query engine will pass the SQL and the query data cubes from its base. Uh, the architecture of Kali is designed to be flexible, so we can easily replace one module to another one. For example, we can add a new build engine without impacting on other modules. So let's see what's new with Kilinar Parquet. Kilinar Parquet is not just the storage engines, but also the query engine and build engine. 
uh, storage we replace its base to packet and uh, the query task can be submitted to yarn cluster and all, all steps of build are processed with spark the new build engine no longer supports MapReduce. The data source uh, currently supports reading local CSV files. This involves the developer debug the source code of Kini without Hadoop environment. Uh, we use Pocket as new stories, which can be stored at any cloud stories like uh, Amazon S3, is a blob, etc. So, uh, if you have used the uh, kind of before, uh, you must know what does the build engine do. I explain two concepts first. We call all combinations of dimension cube and uh, one combination of dimension cuboid. As we mentioned before, um, Kaling leverages pre calculation to improve cloud performance and concurrency. The build engine will uh, read the data from the data source and then save all cuboids into disk after aggregating, indexing, and encoding. Um, this is a strategy of space for time. And uh, as for the Kenyan Parquet, what we care about is to save more space and make a build and query faster. So uh, that's why we need a new build engine. The, pre the previous Build engine will save the cube files both into its device and its base, which will cost more storage space. Uh, the data in its base will be used by query engine, and the data in its device will be used uh, by other uh, build tasks uh, like the cube merging job. We can see from this diagram uh, the build job with MapReduce needs too much our resource. It needs to flush results of current step into disk for the next step. And now, with the new engine, the cube files can be saved uh, as packet files into HDFS or any other cloud storage. We won't need this space anymore. All tasks are um, executed in memory with Spark RDD. Uh, build efficiency and speed has more than doubled, and it costs uh, a less storage space. We can see more from the following benchmark. As for the stories, when using in space, dimensions and measures uh, were encoded to one color. And uh, the serialization and deserialization re uh, require time. But uh, Parquet has good efficiency of I.O. and uh, compression. And Paquet is real columnar storage and supports secondary index. We can repartition the uh, Paquet file that contains high canonality using secondary index to accelerate querying. And it's cloud friendly. We can store cuboids as Paquet in any cloud storage. We can read the values of cube files directly. And we can see from here, uh, we can read the Paquet files uh, add data frame using Spark cell. Uh, we can just print a schema. A query engine of Kino Space processes a query request in a single query server, which will cause the single point problem. The new engine will convert uh, the real nodes generated by uh, Kelsat to Spark plan. Then the query task will be submitted to a distributed YAN cluster by Spark. The query engine optimizes complex queries specifically. We will see how fast and uh, uh, the new query engine is uh, of, uh, from the next demo and benchmark. Okay, now I will show the performance of Canon Party with the live demo. The data set I use is TB6, and the uh, uh, data size is about 12 million rows. We have prepared the model of TB6, and you can download it from the Git repository of Kanjins. Uh, there are two instances of Kaling. 
and the left one is cannot park it, and the right is cannot space. So uh, the difference we can see is the engine type changes. The engine type of cannon pocket now is, you can see it from over here, and the engine type of cannon pocket is spark, and uh, the engine type of cannon is this is, is map produce. So, uh, there are many stand, standard queries, uh, SQLs, in the repository of PPCs. Uh, we can select one and uh, submit to the query engine. Okay, the first is the uh, kernel parquet. And uh, we pass it to the kernel space. Okay, we can see the uh, the duration of the kernel parquet is about uh, two seconds, and uh, uh, kernel space is the running. Uh, we need to wait a moment. Okay. Uh, the duration of kernel space uh, takes about 27 seconds. Uh, let's take another one. Uh, you can see the uh, SQL include, uh, includes multi-join tables and uh, all the by. So, You can see uh, the duration of this uh, SQL to, uh, takes about one second, and uh, that of KNN is about six seconds. So, uh, if you are interested in the query job, uh, or if you are interested in the source code as a developer, you can track in KNN uh, packet from the repository of our packet Kalin. Now the source code uh, are hosting the uh, repository of Apache Kali as a new branch uh, named the uh, kernel Apache V2. And there are also documents of usage and uh, development. So next is the benchmark of kernel Apache. Here is the information of environment. The Hadoop version is CDS 5.11. The Hadoop, Hadoop in a cluster include four nodes. The YARN has 400 GB RAM and uh, 128 cores. We run the benchmark of SSD and TVCH. Okay, uh, now let's see the performance of build engine first. From these two diagrams, the red bar corresponds to the result of Kylin on its base and the blue bar corresponds to the result of Kylin parking. You can see that uh, of 90 million rows, the build duration of um, the build duration of kernel space took about an hour, and uh, that of kernel parquet took about uh, half an hour. And the the data size of kernel space is 27 GB, and that of kernel parquet is 15. So the build efficiency and speed of kernel on parquet has nearly doubled, and it saves nearly half of the storage space. Now for the query engine, we can see that uh, most query requests of kernel uh, parquet are first senses of kernel on space. So uh, the above is all the content I shared. I thank you. Uh, next, uh, let's welcome Kegel to introduce the use cases. Okay, let me share my screen. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, Rufan, for sharing your deep insights and uh, impressive demo. Here, uh, I'm going to introduce some use cases. Since this new feature has just been launched and has not been officially released, 
there are relatively new, few use cases in the community. But as we mentioned earlier, this feature was developed by Caligens and has been provided to customers for a long time in the commercial version. Here we have obtained some use cases from Caligens. Um, the first case is a leading mobile phone manufacturer from China. They have a total of 600 terabyte, terabyte of data and uh, more than 30,000 queries per day. They use Caligen services for sales uh, data analysis, cost analysis, and the user behavior analysis, etc. When using the old version of Engine, they encountered the following pain points. For example, they often find that uh, some queries, uh, their performance is not so good. They met some uh, performance, performance bottlenecks, especially, especially when dealing with uh, complex queries. Um, and also as uh, historical data accumulates more and more, once the data or model changes, the cost of refreshing the cube is also increasing. It often takes a long time to refresh all historical data. Um, and also at the same time, in order to accommodate so many historical data, they also maintain a very large HBase cluster which brings a lot of maintenance costs. And after upgrading the new storage engine, these problems are solved well. Here are some comparison results we collected. The picture on the left shows the query latency before and after replacing the engine. The blue columns represent old engine and orange columns represent new engine. We can see that for most queries, performance has been improved, especially for complex query scenarios. The diagram on the right shows that the build time is greatly reduced. We can see that the new engine uh, saves more than half of the build time compared to old engine. At the same time, they no longer need to continue to operate and maintain a large number of HBase cluster so that they can focus more on key business values. Our, uh, another use case is a unicorn sales company from the US, which provides uh, sales services based on AI technology in the cloud. To date, they have more than 1,500 enterprise customers. They use intelligence to provide services for their customers with insight into data, report analysis, and the self-discovery of, of data. At the same time, their technical architecture is all based on AWS. So they are seeking a fully cloud-based solution. Like many uh, such companies, their needs are very typical. Due to the rapid growth of business, it is difficult to expand the early technical architecture horizontally and it is very difficult to support more and more data. So they urgently need a solution that can easily expand it. In addition, due to their business characteristics, their visits show a clear peak and valley distribution. At peak times, the number of visits from customers increased dramatically, which greatly increased the workload of their background system. However, during the idle time, the number of visits decreased. Therefore, an elastic solution is needed, which uh, can not only meet their workload at big time, but can also release resources when not used to save cost. Finally, uh, since it is a startup company, they don't want to invest too much in maintenance work. They want to invest more resources in business growth. This is the Apache Kaling based architecture they currently use. Actually, they are using Kaligens right now. I put up Apache Kaling for better understanding. From the figure, we can see that the new engine of Apache Kaling achieves a good, good separation of computing and the storage. So both the South data and the Cube data are stored in, on S3. And the computing results are provided by an EC2 autoscaling cluster, 
that can be dynamically scaled. So when the workload increase, we only need to expand the numbers of AC2 nodes in, in this uh, autoscaling group to quickly ensure the response performance of the system. When the business load decreases, we can quickly replace EC2 node to saving cost. Thinking about the uh, previous uh, HBase uh, story engine, because the computing and the storage are tightly coupled, we cannot do this scaling based on the workload. All right, so in addition, Apache Kaling can also be integrated with uh, other AWS services, for example, AWS Glue, AWS RDS, Active Directory, et cetera. So this solution can be compatible with uh, uh, almost uh, common AWS service services and also with uh, their previous architecture on AWS. All their investment they put in on AWS can be reused. All right. Uh, that's all uh, we have for today's uh, meetup. So if you are interested with Apache Kaling, please uh, uh, welcome to join the Apache Kaling community. Uh, there are three uh, ways you can join us. The first one is you can fork our project in GitHub and you can also subscribe our mail group. And you are also very welcome to join our Slack channel. All right, thank you. Thank you again. Hey, Kai. Yep. Hey, I had a question. Uh, did you guys do any benchmarking studies on the on the AWS side on the, you know, uh, the Unicorn before, uh, you know, uh, queries before and after on AWS with and without Kylie? Uh, you mean the, the use cases I just mentioned or the common benchmark? Yeah, not the benchmark before, but the one on the cloud, if you had uh -huh. any benchmarking slides. Uh, um, right, now, right now, I don't have any uh, uh, statistics at hand, uh, but we can collect some from the, our users on AWS. Yeah, that would be a good view, I think, to see the performance improve. Yeah, performance yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, that's a Hello. very good question. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Kaiga. Hi, this is Shofeng. Uh, Hi, Shofeng. Yeah, uh, for this question, uh, yes, actually, we, we, we do uh, made some performance test for the customer on AWS. Um, we run the whole, uh, whole infrastructure on AWS. Uh, as Kaiga mentioned, the data is in AWS S3 and uh, running killing uh, with the EC2 instance and uh, with Spark as the uh, execution engine and the uh, packet as a storage format. And uh, uh, the scenario is uh, something also complicated. For example, they have some uh, by hierarchy draw ups and uh, the metrics are also complicated. For example, they will do some uh, counter distinct calculation. Uh, so such kind of query they used to run uh, with uh, AWS uh, Aurora and also uh, the RDS, which is a post, uh, Postgres uh, SQL, but they couldn't uh, finish the query in time. Sometimes it will time out in Aurora and sometimes it will totally report error. But with Kaligence, with uh, Kaling on AWS, uh, most of the queries can be returned uh, under five uh, seconds. And uh, currently we are working on to further optimize it to, uh, to narrow down. Uh, currently most of the query can be uh, in five seconds uh, and uh, with uh, some kind of concurrent uh, queries, for example, uh, 30 to 40 uh, threads to query together. And the, the target we are working on is to uh, reduce the latency to two seconds, which can ensure a better uh, experiences for the users. Because uh, most of the users are the management team of the company. So the user experience is very important. 
So, um, th thank you for that. And um, another question, actually. So, so how does it work? So, if a customer has AWS account and he wants to use Kylene on their account, uh, is there a tool mm -hmm. or something that they add on, or how does it work for them? Right. Uh, actually, we our product is called the Kylene's Cloud, uh, which will provide the uh, the which will provision the infrastructure, which include the uh, cluster and the uh, killing in your AWS account. So that you can use it to connect with your AWS uh, S3 buckets to read the data and then to build the index, which is the cubes. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hego. Please go ahead. Thank you, Shofan. Um, I saw some uh, questions uh, in the Q and A session, and uh, Rupan is uh, give some uh, already give some uh, answers. I can uh, pick some of them and uh, give some uh, details explanation. Uh, <clears throat> for example, the one uh, John asked about their calling versus true versus presto, what are the difference between them? Um, yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, it, uh, it is of, often asked by the community users. So I think uh, the major difference between those three uh, are they are different, uh, they are in different position in the big data uh, world. So calling is major uh, focus on the OLAP layer and a data warehouse layer. Um, Jude uh, is usually famous uh, for his uh, its uh, streaming capability, real-time capability. Uh, although Apache Kaling released the uh, uh, real-time features in their latest uh, release, um, we can we, we have our first step towards to their real-time. Uh, but Jude actually uh, at the very beginning are designed for real-time scenarios. And Presto, Presto is kind of a, a virtualization layer. So for example, if you have a lot of data sources and you can use uh, Presto to uh, make a federation queries on those uh, different sources, you can virtualize them and uh, treat them as a single source, right? So they, uh, they have different targeted uh, use cases uh, based on your different requirement, you can choose uh, any of them, and you can also combine them together because usually in a real scenarios, uh, there are a lot of complex uh, uh, requirement. Uh, maybe you cannot fulfill those requirements with only one tool, so you can combine them together. Uh, and some ma uh, some uh, minor difference between them, for example, Kaling can support SQL interface, and Druid cannot support SQL interface directly you need to write uh, 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 their uh, API uh, based on their uh, JSON uh, definition. That's, uh, that's a different. And um, another question I can see is there, let me check. Can Redshift materialized view achieve the same thing than Kelly? Um, yeah, this is a very good question. Um, so materialized view is kind of a way to do the pre-aggregation, um, but it's a little different with a uh, queue. Uh, apart from calling actually uh, OLAP queue in the, uh, in the traditional uh, theory, um, even before the big data error, there are a lot of famous OLAP tools uh, in the old days. For example, the SSAS, Microsoft SSAS, uh, MicroStrategy, and others. Um, the difference between OLAP Cube with the uh, materialized views are uh, uh, they are quite flexible. So uh, in your scenarios, really you only need to choose uh, different columns to uh, observe your metrics. Uh, in a material realized view, you have to have all the columns or you have to uh, design different materialized view for different uh, columns, right? 
so in the multi-dimensional uh, modeling, you don't have to consider uh, how can I maintain so many materialized view for different combination of the uh, columns, right? So, so you can put them all together in a cube and the end users, they can choose any of them based on their requirement. So the engineer, they don't have to maintain, uh, for example, thousand or uh, even a hundred of thousand of materials like materialized views to uh, accelerate the end user's requirement. That's a major difference. But actually, you can uh, if you have uh, enough resources to maintain so many materialized views. Uh, definitely, you can have the same effect, but the effort is totally different. And also, uh, if you have any changes on the requirement, you don't have to main, uh, modify your script and there are jobs about those uh, views. You can just uh, do a drag and drop in Kotlin's UI. That's uh, quite simpler than uh, you change their codes or SQLs. So that's uh, the major difference, I think. And um, another question is there, uh, what are there some of the nature of project that are ideal for culling? Um, usually, uh, uh, because culling is there uh, focus on OLAP layer or data warehouse layer. So the uh, basic scenarios for culling, for example, if you have some uh, reports in BI tools, for example, if you are using uh, Tableau, or uh, Power BI or other BI tools, and you found that your report is uh, quite slow, and you want to have an interactive uh, query performance, you can use Apache Cowling in the middle layer between BI tools and your data house or between your uh, data sources. Uh, in that case, you can find that the reports can be accelerated very quickly, uh, super fast. So that's a typical scenario for Cowling. Okay, and another question is, uh, is the calling a replacement for OLAP? Um, actually, uh, it's not a replacement. Uh, calling is kind of an implementation of OLAP in big data platform. So uh, there are a lot of use cases. For example, uh, the users, they already have OLAP uh, tools, traditional OLAP tools. And, uh, but the limitation of the traditional OLAP tools, they are limited by the data volumes. Usually they are not uh, in a cluster, they are not distributed, they are stored in a, a single node. And the data they can pros process are limited by the CPUs, by the memories, by the storage, right? So Kotlin is kind of implementation in the big data technology. We put the OLAP cube into their uh, distributed technology and uh, work together with cloud and other uh, big data technology. So we extend the up capability of traditional OLAP tools. It's not a replacement, it's another kind of implementation in big data platform. Mm. Any questions? Does telling any particular aggregation Model, MOLAP, whole lab, roll lab. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, a good question. So um, I think calling calling is kind of a whole lab. It's a mm, uh, most of the scenarios are MOLAP, but calling can support roll lab as well. So I can I I want to define the other whole lab. Is Kaling available for error? Uh, yes, so Kaling is available for error already. Uh, with the current version and the previous version, Kaling can be deployed uh, in any Hadoop distribution. Uh, for error, the famous uh, Hadoop distribution is HD Insight. So Kaling can be easily deployed in the HD Insight cluster. You can choose uh, any node of the HD inside cluster and install calling uh, to run your job. Uh, with the new uh, story engine, I think uh, when we release this feature, 
uh, we can leverage the blob storage or ADLS. Uh, so you don't need to store the data in HD inside anymore. You can just uh, uh, provision some uh, VM and install cluster, a uh, Spark cluster inside the VMs. Uh, and uh, the data can be ingested from the blob storage and the cube data will be stored in the blob storage as well as a packet format. Okay, did I miss uh, any questions? Uh, another question is, so if calling is so good, why not attach it to OLAP, uh, not OLAP? So yeah, that is a very good question. So uh OLTP is a different uh layer with uh OLAP. O OLTP focuses on the uh transaction. So uh usually we're using the traditional RDB RDBMS uh to uh provide o OLTP uh features. Uh like uh you, you, you need to insert new record, you need to uh uh, change or uh, modify some uh, existing record. Uh, OLAP is a, diff is a little different. OLAP uh, focuses on the rate. So most of the operations in OLAP layer are rate operations. Uh, all the historical data are loaded to OLAP layer. They have a, a less ch possibility to change. Uh, yes, it can be changed, but we usually don't change it too, so frequently. So, uh, for example, in Kotlin, we cannot support uh, the random uh, modification of existing data. So if you have uh, some uh, data, historical data change, you have to refresh a period of data. Uh, so Kotlin cannot support the OLTP scenarios right now. That's why uh, uh, we, we call it uh, OLAP tool in big data. Uh, do I need to know Spark or SQL is fine if we need to switch from uh, uh, high premium to Kotlin. I didn't know this tool, sorry. Uh, but uh, for just for your question, um, so Kotlin provide a SQL interface for any users. You, do, you don't need to write Spark tasks or you don't need to write SQL script to build the, those cubes those tasks and those queries are generated automatically. You don't need to have, you don't have to maintain them. So the, the only queries you need to write is the business queries. So uh, all the data has been loaded to the queue. You want to fetch some result from the queue, just like you, uh, you, you query your database. Uh, you just write those uh, uh, queries uh, to fetch results. And also if you, perform your analysis from the uh, applications of BI tools. You don't need to write any SQLs. You can just uh, drag and drop and uh, build your report. The SQLs will be generated directly from the BI tools and sent to Kaling. Uh, Kaling will process the queries and the gather result back. So it doesn't matter. Uh, there are still a lot of questions. I'm not sure if we have enough time. So uh, please interrupt me if uh, uh, I, I, if uh, we, we don't have enough time. Do you support storage in ORC format? Um, as I know, we can support the source data in ORC format. Uh, but right now, I think we cannot support ORC format as a cube storage. Please correct me uh, if I'm not, not correct, Jonathan. Okay, uh, Hyperin is the traditional OLAP rollup that Oracle offers. Yeah, good to know, thank you. Where we could find the slide you shared today, kindly post a link if any. Yeah, sure, we will uh, share the, the slides. Uh, but I'm not sure uh, where we will put it. Maybe uh, uh, you can check the meetup link later. Any questions I missed? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I have, I have two questions. The first one is uh, from today, share you may I simple think this is a good combination to use Kaling now of Hell plus Spark plus Parquet for the latest uh, version uh, from, from commercial version, Kaling. 
instead of use the old one, for example, how to MapReduce to HBase? Uh, yes, correct. So uh, this is a recommended uh, architecture for the uh, for the next release. Uh, as Shafa mentioned earlier, uh, we will release this feature in uh, Apache Kaling 4.0. Uh, in that release, we will recommend you use uh, just like you said, high plus Spark plus Parquet as their uh, fundamental architecture, and uh, instead of a uh, uh, previous high plus MapReduce and the uh, HBase. Uh, the reason uh, we already discussed in this uh, meetup um, earlier. Yeah, and uh, I think you can get some benefits from the new architecture, especially for their uh, building performance and query performance. Okay, thank you. The second simple question is, and I know you already provide a killing cloud to end user to use, and I know is there any dedicated center from your company to build or you just uh, install or release the Kinlin version on some managed uh, public cloud, for example, AWS and other Azure and other cloud? Mm, yeah, for this question, actually, uh, for the open source version, Apache mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah we, we don't have any uh, dedicated cloud platform. So you can run them against any um, major uh, cloud platform, public cloud. But we don't have, uh, uh, we, we do have some uh, uh, test and on the cloud platform, but uh, because uh, Apache Kaling uh, just uh, rely on their, uh, the virtual machine and the storage and uh, uh, the, the data sources. So uh, if Apache Kaling are compatible with those uh, uh, dependencies, I think it can be run in any cloud cloud platform. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we have any uh, testing plan or the compatible testing plan for the different cloud platform, but uh, maybe Shofun can add something about that. Uh, that's uh, the, the current status of open source version. For the commercial version, we have uh, Calendars Cloud, which is the, uh, a, a product in Caledrons and all the major mainstream cloud, cloud platform has been proven supported, for example, AWS, Air, Google Cloud, et cetera. Uh, those uh, uh, can be integrated automatically with their uh, simple clicks uh, and even with their uh, UI uh, provided. And what is the difference uh, from the Killing Cloud which you provided? And another is I rent a public cloud, for example, from AWS and install killing, killing commercial version by ourselves. What's the difference for the uh, two versions? Yeah. Yes. So, so the, the major difference between those two uh, methods is, um, first of all, you need to, you don't need to maintain the cluster and the deployment and the infrastructure by yourself. Challenge Cloud will maintain those for you. And Kindness Cloud also provides some uh, uh, enterprise features, for example, their uh, security integration with their, uh, the major security uh, framework in cloud, for example, in AWS, Kindness Cloud can support IAM role. Um, you, you need to do this by yourself if you are using Apache Kaling. And uh, Kindness Cloud also provides some auto scaling features based on your workload. Uh, uh, with Apache Kaling, you have to leverage uh, the auto scaling group uh, provided by AWS. And you know, the scale scalability features in different cloud are uh, quite different. For example, in AWS, you can just uh, use their uh, auto scaling group to do the auto scaling. In uh, Air, you need to uh, use their uh, the VM set, the, 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 the instance set to do that. So uh, Times Cloud uh, hide the difference between different cloud, cloud platform. You don't need to worry about the difference between different cloud, cloud platform. And uh, what's more, oh yeah, so Caligence Cloud also provides some uh, enhancement 
uh, in the storage layer, for example, in the host, uh, I think we, we all know the, the difference between the cloud storage and the real file system in the disk, right? So the uh, uh, read and write, uh, the IO performance is quite different from the cloud storage. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, latency uh, with uh, cloud storage and uh, the uh, uh, Cadence Cloud provides some uh, cached layer and other technology to uh, make their cloud storage uh, have better performance for their building and query. Uh, that's another uh, difference. I think that that's also our, uh, uh, we need to enhance those, uh, those issues in open source version as well in the future. Okay, thank you for your answer and good sharing. Yeah, thank you again. Yep, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, that's all the questions.